Good morning, Florida Panthers fans. And once again, that's all I'm allowed to say. Stu, go ahead, brother. So I searched the country for the best stand-up comedian and could only find this guy. Probably <laughs> the best color analyst in hockey. Him and Goldie make up the best Broadway, a best broadcast team. Yeah. And I know I'm biased, no kissing ass, but Randy knows his stuff, so... Always a pleasure to have him on with us. Um, so this is an unusual game review. This is, Randy, we do the game review the day after. So this is, you know, a, a first for you. So um, let's just and, go review the game. In your and, and good morning. And thank you for joining us on so early on a Sunday morning. Yeah, well, <laughs> thanks, for thanks for having me on, guys. And I apologize in advance. My... Uh, my voice, um, <laughs> I, I suffer from allergies, and uh, living down here in South Florida, we all know, and especially when the breeze is blowing a little bit, there is so much that's going around in the air yeah. and, and that, but so it takes me a little bit in the morning to get going, but no, it's it's, uh, it's always a pleasure to join you guys. You know, um, game recap of last night, uh, obviously the Panthers, um they got jumped on pretty good at the start of that game. Carolina really came out hard and with their four check and had a lot of possession time in the Panther zone. And I think I I wrote down it was twelve to one in shots in favor of the Hurricanes after uh, seven minutes of play. And the Panthers did get a few shots um, later on, obviously in that first period. But they hung on and they you know they gave yeah. up that early goal and and then and then of course Bob made 35 consecutive saves <laughs> in that game including overtime and what what can you say about this about this Florida Panthers team they we've said all the all the clichés and that the resiliency the uh, you know the work ethic the chemistry the the individual efforts and that but i i pointed out in our in Bali sports uh, Florida post game show the Goldie and I and Katie jumps on as well from the fan uh, from the party fan party and that the watch party um, there was a shift it's about seven minutes left in the first period where Bennett Kachuk and Cousins got out there and there was a couple of huge hits uh, Cousins and then Kachuk with a big hit then Bennett came in with a big hit and they had puck possession and that really seemed, in, to, I don't know if I want to say change the complex of the game or tilted it towards the Panthers, but that huge shift by that line in the first period really did change the tone of, this, of the hockey game, and now it became even. Now right. it was going to be a battle of attrition where it would be the, the board battles keeping – a lot of the play to the outside and then allow these goaltenders to excel, which, I mean, give Ranta a credit. Panthers yeah. had all kinds of opportunities to win the game in regulation, but, but Sergei Bobrovsky is just in a zone right now. He looks like to me in a positive way, almost in like a zombie like trance where nothing is going to derail him. His concentration is focus and I, I don't know if I've ever been around. I've been around this game for 50 years, seeing uh, an individual performance that close, you know, up front that close to watch every moment, every second of every game. And he is certainly in a position right now, and it's got to be the leader along with Kachuk for the Conn Smythe Trophy and for his performance. And uh, I, it, it is remarkable. And it's inspiring, and I, it's it's a hell of a ride. And just proves, guys, that you never know. You just never know. And I, I don't want to uh, rehash it again, how the Panthers were able to qualify for the playoffs and the, the, the second last day of the regular season and then be down three games to one to the Boston Bruins. Yep. The, the game five in Boston, and they put Bobrovsky in net and the pressure that he must felt. But he seems to thrive on that. And um, it's not that he, I think, enjoys the pressure. I don't know. But he just enjoys the, the competition and 
to have an opportunity to be on that center stage is what really motivates them. And, and I compliment them as well for being such level headed. It's almost um, routine for him after every game. He says the same things after yeah. every game, whether it's a win or a loss, bad win, bad loss, big win, huge win, level headed. It's just staying in the moment staying uh, uh, recognizing what situation that you're in and then park it and then look forward and prepare for that next game and um the true professionalism because it's been a rough year it was a rough year for sergey Bobrovsky, yeah. and, and with that sound it makes and the expectations um to be able to come out on on the other side and, and to be really a, a focal point of this success story for the florida panthers is is truly remarkable it's interesting that you put it that way because um, one of the things I, I, I mentioned this in the video and I've been thinking about it is, and this is no this is no shade at that team, but the 96 team, if you look at that picture with all of them with the Eastern Conference Championship Trophy and you see Beezer is just letting it all out. You see it in his face and... I just been kind of think, you know, I've been thinking. It's just kind of like they let it all out too soon. Yeah. They, 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 they. I mean, they earned it, but they kind of let it all. They let all that out too soon, and I'm, I'm not seeing with this team to the same thing. What you? It's funny because I was, I just watched Bob's interview before we came on here, and I'm, I was exactly was what I'm like. He's saying the exact same thing. It's like a, it's like a robot. There is nothing getting in, which is exactly what you want to see. Um. <coughs> You know, the, there's a million in-game things that happen during during a game like that, and I mean, I, I you know, I, I I keep being very very careful. I want to get ahead of myself. You know what I mean? We we all know anything can happen in the playoffs, but you know, Kyle kind of talked to me a little bit last night after the game, and again, not want to get ahead of myself, but boy, you you kind of almost get the feeling like we took almost the best punch that that the canes had at us you, you know what you know what i mean especially that yeah. first period yesterday yeah, yeah they did they did and and uh that's got to be disheartening and I, I don't know if you if you were able to catch uh rod brindamore's the head coach of the carolina his post-game press conference and you could tell he that really affected him and uh you know i i, I assume that what's going through his mind after he had that press conference and going back to his coach's room and talking with his coaches and the management and them sitting there going, what do we, <laughs> where, where do we go now? How do we, right. so why I'm saying that is, and I, I, I want to bring this point up. There's so many things that go on during a game. And you talk about matchups and, and that at individual battles, I mean, but the Barkoff goal last night was <laughs> will be played a million times over the next number of years, and and the confidence and the coolness and the uh, that he showed last night. But you take a look at Barkoff, and there was you know there was criticism of Alexander Barkoff early in the playoffs. People didn't realize a how sick he was, right, and b we playing with a injury. Hmm. And yet everybody was going, where's Barkov? Well, what's wrong with Barkov? Well, he was trying to do the best that he can to give his team a chance to win. And what he has done against Patrice Bergeron in that and, uh, and Coyle in that Boston series and up against McAvoy, big, strong, physical, and then what he did to Austin Matthews in the second round completely shut him down. Completely. And now what he's doing to Jordan Stahl as well, although Stahl did have some scoring chances last night. He's a superstar. And he and and uh, Sebastian Ajo. Alexander Barkov is putting on a clinic, a 200-foot game clinic right now that – even surprises me and nothing really surprises me about <laughs> Alexander Barkov. 
the way that he can shift from his defensive responsibilities in the middle of the ice, he takes every important draw, the battles that he wins in his own end. Without those battles won, the Panthers are not in the position that they're in. Right. So I want to give him the goes to that. The Panthers' willingness to change their game from last year to this year to a more defensive, more board battle, uh, support. Um, sometimes it's not the most exciting hockey, but it's what it takes to win in the playoffs. Shift in and shift it out. And for these players to buy in uh, to that system for the benefit of the team is remarkable as well. And uh, my hat's off to them because it's not easy, guys. And blocking shots and taking oh. hits to make the play. Um, they, but they continue to be a resilient group. And that's the reason they're in this position right now. Um, the excellent defensive plays that the Panthers continue to make on a nightly. How about Matthew Kachuk diving when there was a breakdown, a turnover, and the puck yep. was being centered by Burns, and it looked like Martinuk was going to get an empty net goal uh, with a tap in, and Kachuk dives forward yep. at the risk of getting a, a, a puck, a stick, a skate in the face to save what could have been a very good scoring chance. These are the things that I like to acknowledge in that. And it's easy to say, oh, Bob was excellent and, and uh, Chuck E. Cheese scored the, another overtime winning goal. But it's more than that. And, yeah. and these players now and the team and the coaches and everybody that's involved with the team are all in this bubble now that with this team success – and they're just thriving off of all this stuff. And when there's a big block on the ice, Nick Cousins is the first one down the bench, high-fiving them and patting them on the back, whoever it was, Mark Stahl or Mahura. Yeah. How, about, how about Josh Mahura's game last night? Yeah. How about that pass primary to assist, uh, uh, On the Barkoff goal, he made some unbelievable defensive plays. And the Panthers' defense, Mark Stahl included, as a six-man unit, they're under pressure all the time. And the final thing that I want to say on this subject is the Panthers been able to take away what has given the Boston Bruins the best regular season in the history of the NHL, took away the Toronto Maple Leafs' biggest weapons, which is their offense, and they're scoring off the rush. And now they're taking away the Carolina Hurricanes' best weapon, which is their speed. They're the fastest team in the NHL. If you take a poll of so many people that, that watch the NHL or, or that are in the NHL. Carolina, what they finished fourth in the NHL in points, they're scoring off the rush. And that the Panthers have taken that away. Right now, they've taken it away from them. And Carolina looks almost like the Panthers did last year in that second round against the Tampa Bay Lightning where they were like, oh boy, now they've taken away our offense. What do we do now? Right. And that doubt in the mind of the Carolina Hurricanes right now has got to be the biggest detriment for them getting back into this series. Yep. Yeah, you, meant, you mentioned that, that uh, the turning point was that Bennett line and their you know, hitting. And I've been talking about that throughout. That's what got us here. That's how we beat Boston. That's how we beat Toronto. Guys do not want to get hit. And when they're getting hit every, and I'm talking about crunch, not just a little, you know, little tap. Yeah. I mean, these guys, these guys are looking to put their players through the boards legally, but their, their, their physical game. I don't think anybody, yeah. has an answer to it. And I think yeah, that's, well, why, yeah. that's why they've yeah, been successful. You, you, make a, you make a good point because um, the Toronto Maple Leafs, after the Panthers just completely pounded them in those first two games in, in Toronto, uh, uh, it, it's human nature that if you don't, if you're not comfortable with something, it's human nature to, to back off and to resist and, and not fight back or to push back. And that's how the Panthers were able to eliminate the Toronto Maple Leafs. And these hits now that the Panthers are implying on the all over the ice on Carolina and with the forecheck and the Bennett and the Cousins and 
Blomberg now and, and Colin White and, and big Eric Stahl just pounding those defense. That's going to pay dividends later on yep. in the in the series if needed. Right. Um, the the good thing, another positive that, that, that happened last night for me is I was so happy that the Panthers were able to score that goal in overtime on the power play. Yeah. yeah. The power play has struggled, and I'm not going to criticize the Panthers because they're up against, in my mind, throughout the season, the best penalty-killing team in the NHL, which is the Carolina Hurricanes, with the speed that they have and the tenacity, and they play in a very structured system that Rod Brindamore has implemented for them. It's tough for any team. But for the Panthers, not only to win that game in overtime, but the play that they made on the power play. So, the long-winded uh, explanation is, if the Panthers are going to win this series and continue to have success and win this series, they have to get contributions from the power play. The special right. teams are. Now, go back to game one. I don't think I've ever seen it, guys. I, I don't think I've ever seen in a playoff game where you go 0 for 3 on the power play, that was the Panthers, with one shot. <laughs> one shot. That's all they had in three power play opportunities. Yes. And they uh, Carolina went 2 for 6 on the power play, and the yeah. Panthers still won the game. Won the game. I yep. don't think I've ever seen that. It could catch up to the Panthers. It could because Carolina, you saw the way that they uh, – uh, the, the way that they destroyed and dismantled New Jersey in their in their previous round with their lethal power play, it could catch up, and I hope it doesn't. But the power play, special teams, penalty killing, will and always be uh, forefront in the winning of a series in the Stanley Cup. Yep. So I want to just—I I know we've talked about it a little bit, but um, and you're—is there anybody you've seen going a run like this, like Bob? I mean, I mean, obviously, as Panther fans, we might say Patrick Waugh in 96. But, I mean, some of the saves that he's making, you can see on the other side, just it's got to be demoralizing to the Canes. I mean, there was two or three saves last night where, and, and even in game one, where I'm, we're watching and I'm like, and they score. But wait, it didn't go in? We're like, wait, what? He saved that? Yeah. Um, uh, Actually, you know, my wife yesterday, she said to me, have you ever seen something like this before? And I said, yeah, I have. It was only a few years ago. The St. Louis, and I explained, the St. Louis Blues were dead last in the National Hockey League standings in the early part of January. Yeah. Make the coaching change. Craig Berube comes in. They call up the young goaltender. And away they went. Yeah. And it was... One for all, all for one, and they just galvanized, and they won, what, 17 of their last 19 games to just get into the playoffs, and that, it happens. And then we all know St. Louis went on and won the Stanley Cup. Yeah. Right. Um, they finally figured out how to play and adjust their game in order to win consistently. That's what the Panthers are doing. The Los Angeles Kings, when they won their first Stanley Cup, it was the same way. They yep. barely got into the playoffs, but something they they became a heavy puck possession, four checking, physical, dynamic machine that teams just couldn't handle. Right. And, and the Panthers right now with the size, and that's what they're saying. Other people are saying this. Wow, you see the Florida Panthers? <coughs> are they ever a heavy team? Well, Let's describe what heavy means. Heavy means that you're never giving up on a puck. You're right. going to fight tooth and nail for every puck possession. You're going to finish your check every opportunity you get. And, oh, by the way, if I get a chance, I'm going to put you through the end boards. That's what we call a heavy team. The bark off strong in the puck, owning the middle of the ice, he and Bennett going back and forth. Eric Stahl at six foot six, two hundred and twenty pounds, owning the middle of the ice. That's what heaviness means, and that's how you win. It's been proven in the playoffs now for the last 
10, 12 years. How about the Washington right. Capitals? The way Ovechkin played in the in the playoffs when they won their cup. And TJ yeah. Oshie and 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 Hathaway and all these guys that uh, that the heaviness that they played with. That is playoff hockey. A lot of a lot yep. of hockey fans, guys, they want to see the tic tac toe and they want to see the Connor McDavid uh, weave through the whole team. They want to see Austin Matthews with the behind the back play or whatever. It doesn't work in the playoffs. Yeah, well, I, I, no. I, I'm sorry to. Uh, I'm almost apologizing, but it doesn't work. There's mm-hmm. there's so the the room on the ice to make plays goes from here to there. Yep. And so you got to make a decision. Am I going to try a risky pass up the middle of the ice that probably is going to get picked off? Or am I just going to chip it up the wall and have my winger battle for it, use his body, take a hit, get it to another open man, and then away you go? And the Panthers last year in Tampa, it didn't work. Yep. It didn't work. They got beat four straight. They figured it out. They made the adjustments uh, and the style that they're playing, and and that's the reason why they've they've had the success. Yep. Um, I want to last last thing. I want to talk a little bit about your opinion on Game Three, because I mean each game stacks on top of one another, right? Game One's important, but it's not as important as two because now somebody's got a chance to take a stranglehold. And if you win both, now you've got something going. But game three can just as easily be a whoopsie as we let a team back in. So what what do you think we're going to see from either team, um, to, I guess, tomorrow? Yeah. Uh, well, I, I know the Panthers, and they said it last night, you know, they're looking forward to getting back home. I mean, it, seemed, it seems like it's been like two weeks since the Panthers have had a home game. Yeah. Um, they're looking to get back home. And you know the crowd is going to be as wild and bananas as it was in Carolina. Um, the biggest challenge is the Panthers just can't change their game. Right. And not, as they say, put on a show for your home fans. Right. They're, they're going to have to grind it out. They're going to see Carolina come flying at them. And... I just hope that the Panthers can take advantage of the of the atmosphere from the home fans to get the first goal and control the game. Maybe have a two nothing lead, get a two get a lead, and then be able to dictate how the game is going to be played. Boy, oh boy, this is getting nerve wracking. These one one <laughs> games and going into overtime. And Randy, we haven't won a regulation game since game two against Toronto. I know. That, 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 that's, that's, uh, I'm running out of medication that my doctor gives me. The Panthers, the Panthers have won eight straight road games. Think <sighs> about eight straight. And they're not playing. Yeah. No disrespect. Right, yeah, no, I know. They're what not you... playing in Anaheim against the Ducks. Right. Or in Columbus or, in, you know, in teams that are rebuilding. And yeah. They're, they're going into Boston, into <laughs> Toronto. Into Carolina, Carolina and winning, winning these games. Oh, this is this is so much fun. So, uh, you asked the question. Game three, Panthers have to have the mindset of com- 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 continue to remind each other how we got here, how we're having success. Not get too fancy. Um, special teams don't be over aggressive and take a number of penalties, especially in the first period, and, and yeah. allow. Carolina to get established with a power play goal and that and now you're chasing the game and, and that so um, I think the leadership group uh, from the coaches to the, the 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 leaders on this hockey club will remind each other that this is how we're going to succeed and, and let's not change anything so um, I'm looking forward to it. I, it, it, it and I can say it to you guys you're good friends of mine it's tough for me because we're doing these, and I love doing them. These, yeah. these studio post game shows in studio in Fort Lauderdale. I now I'm unable to be at the game and, oh. uh, for the rest of the way, and it it, it, it it's tough to handle. But uh, oh. 
I, I'd love I'd love to be there, but I, I can't. I, I, I have to be in that studio. I write down all kinds of notes and just crazy stuff that happens during the game so then I can go back and explain what happened. Um, I have to be able then I sit in a boardroom with two big screen TVs. We got the, the, the uh, TNT feed. We also have a dirty feed and that as well so we can get some different other different stuff that they're showing around the rink and that right. the concentration to make sure that I am focused on the game and why the who what where when and why the game outcome happened i'd love to be there you panther fans you know that i'm with you at at, at the uh, fla live arena but i've got to do my job and uh, i'm loving it right now and let's hope that the panthers continue on let's yep. not look through, let's not get too ahead of ourselves right now. right right let's live in the moment enjoy it park it and then focus on the game at hand tomorrow Yep, perfectly said. All right. The last go, thing that I, yeah, the go, last go ahead, Stu. The last because you can't, you cannot have a video, and not mention the guy that has changed this franchise. And Randy, you know, you're on the road with these guys, and I'm. I would imagine that you've had some one-on-one -on -one time with them. Do you remember the interview when the trade was made, and he talked about I bring a certain swagger. And I'm here to hopefully, you know, change. I don't know what words to use, but basically to change the team. I mean, um, obviously, he's lived up to everything that he said he was going to do, and then some. In fact, give the Ross Trophy to McDavid because he earned it, okay? He had a great season, goals and points-wise. But to me... The Hart Trophy is not a popularity contest. The Hart Trophy is the most valuable player to his team. And hands down, Kachuk is the most valuable player this year. So just share with everybody, you know, you, if you've had some one-on-one -on -one and, and your perception. I mean, he's a 24-year-old kid. He's a superstar. And he's, he's backing up. I mean, he's walking the walk. I mean, <laughs> two games in a yeah. row. Yeah. Um, if if if, there, if your fans watched the uh, post game show last night on Bali's Golden Eye at the desk, I said about Matthew Kachuk after last season and the disappointment after get, winning the President's Trophy and scoring the most goals since the ninety two ninety three Mario Lemieux uh, Pittsburgh Penguins. I think that's where it was. That's what thirty some years ago. Um, that something was missing something needed to change in order for this team to not just have regular season success but playoff success it had to change when the trade was made to bring matthew kachuk to the florida panthers there was a lot of emotions very popular players and jonathan huberdo mackenzie Weger. Right. panthers gave up a a, 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 a grade a chip prospect plus a first round pick a heavy price to pay but i said it last night where the panthers wanted to be after game four against tampa to getting to where they want to be as a team matthew kachuk has accelerated the process of where they were to where they are tenfold he has change this whole franchise with the with his character and obviously his success so hopefully everybody can understand that that you're it, it's a it's a constant motion okay general managers they look not only short term but they're looking how's this team going to look in a year how's it going to look in three years in five years where do we want to be what do we want to look like matthew kachuk just accelerated that yeah by years yeah years to where the panthers want to be and how his teammates he's almost like the pied piper going right. down the road hey guys <laughs> follow me we're gonna play this way and we're gonna be swashbucklers and play with some sass and and all the confidence and everybody's just falling in line 
And this is nobody. There's nobody. Everybody knew that he was going to bring a different dynamic to this team, guys. But nobody thought that it would be this pronounced as right. as a leader and this and uh, a leader of of all areas on the ice. And also, it allows Alexander Barkov, who wears the C, to be a captain in his own right by the way he just performs on the ice and that. It's a two-pronged thing that's going on with Matthew Kachuk and Alexander Barkov as they lead these team, this team in some different ways, but collectively. That's yep. that's the most impressive thing that I, I, I can say about Matthew Kachuk. Yep. All right, Randy, really appreciate you coming out with us on a Sunday morning. Are you going to get a chance to just relax and chill and watch the game today? Yeah, I, I will. Uh, I'll be flipping back and forth between there and the golf, the PGA Championships. And, uh, gotcha. And, and that, uh, you know what? I just, uh, I, I, this is such a great time for everybody. Enjoy it. You yes. never know playoff hockey. The Panthers, uh, I mean, all these games that they've won in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in overtime, <laughs> they won what five, six straight games in over six straight games in overtime. Yeah. Yeah. Six games. The last six games have been in overtime. They've won. That's it crazy. can turn on a dime. Yep. Don't get too high. Don't get right. too low. Enjoy yep. yourself, and hopefully, when next time you we all talk or whatever, we're in a different series. Yes. Let's just yes. Leave, let's just leave it at that. Well, leave Thanks it at that, guys. Yeah. All right, Randy. Much appreciated. Enjoy your Sunday, buddy.